We spend a lot of time worrying about what it means to be human, to exist as a being aware of your own awareness, as a member of the strangeness of existence interacting with other people that have that same feeling of oddity. Yet I have yet to explore what it means to exist as a physical entity in the cosmos, hurtling through space at thousands of miles per hour and flowing through time at the speed of light. To put it simply, Einstein was smart. If you could quantify whatever level of brilliance you imagine when you think of him, it's insulting. He was smarter. While Arthur Morgan was listening to Dutch's plans, I just need money. Einstein was pursuing math and physics in university. Seven years before John Marston was feeling obsolete when he saw his first horseless carriage, Einstein had invented the concept of space-time and relativity. Einstein was a theoretical physicist. This means that he needed no laboratory, no tests, no experiments. All he needed was his imagination and mathematics. So then, what did he imagine? What inner workings of the universe did he uncover just by sitting down and thinking? Well, pretty much everything. First, he imagined the concept of space-time as a whole. This will be incredibly important later on, and is the whole point of this video. Space and time are not separate. They are two parts of the same whole. Or should I say, four parts. We see around us the three spatial dimensions, X, Y, and Z. These are fundamentally different from the dimensions we think of in pop culture, which are more in line with the concept of parallel universes. Dimensions are the building blocks of how our universe works, how the universe manifests itself, and everything within it. So again, we have three spatial dimensions and they all sit at 90 degree angles to each other. And then somehow we have a fourth dimension, a dimension that is also at a 90 degree angle to the other three. Now this is impossible to illustrate in our universe because the fourth dimension isn't a spatial dimension, it's time. Time is one of the most fundamental aspects of existence, yet the most elusive and mysterious. We don't know why time flows in the direction it does. We don't even think there's a reason it flows the way it does. Perhaps it doesn't, and our perception of the flow of time is just a simplification our brains make. But moving on from that existential crisis and bravely lunging towards the next, the space-time you inhabit is a fabric. It's elastic like a trampoline. It's a trampoline that is everywhere, all of the time. Except it doesn't try to fight your downward force. It gladly lets anything with mass sink as deep as it can go. And when other things that are lighter come around, it will follow the curve. This process explains all gravitational phenomena, from orbits to the formation of stars and planets, to how you and I stand, walk, run, and jump on this planet. Curvature in space-time doesn't only affect the space dimensions, it also impacts time. As gravity becomes more powerful nearer to more massive objects, one might experience time more slowly than an outside observer. This is curvature in space-time and is the basis of general relativity. To put it simply, yet somehow not simply at all, all lines are straight lines except where space-time bends and those lines follow suit. But what about how those lines move? How their speed and trajectory impact their speed and perception of time? The concept of motion and inertia were not new concepts to Einstein. Over 200 years before, in 1686, Sir Isaac Newton published his Laws of Motion, most notably describing that an object in rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion at a constant speed unless acted upon by a force. This was an impressive departure from his experience of the world around him. He'd have to have imagined something no human would experience for another 275 years. A true, elongated escape from the influence of gravity. He understood that gravity was a force, and you could escape from it. However, what Einstein did was far more impressive. He imagined the same principle of inertia and force and movement, but involving all four dimensions of space-time. How does motion impact time? 
is there a conservation of energy across space and time? As it turns out, there is. To simplify this, I'd like to imagine a universe that has two spatial dimensions and one time dimension. Because as I said before, it is impossible to visualize a fourth dimension within our three-dimensional space. On the z-axis, which now represents time, we're going to attribute the up direction with moving forward in time. So as we press play, everything in this graph will move up at a uniform speed. This seems to make sense as we know time to move forward and to do so at a uniform speed, except it doesn't move forward at a uniform rate. Since all objects have a finite amount of energy that can be shared between the spatial and time dimensions, imagine an object that is not moving in any direction in space. It is completely stationary. This is kind of impossible, but let's just imagine it anyway. This object will have all of its possible energy devoted to its speed and time. This would mean that this object is traveling at the speed of light through time. But when it starts moving through space, it has to borrow energy from its speed and time. This means that if we take a second object that is entirely stationary and put the two next to each other, we'll find that the one that is moving through space will move more slowly through time. At its most extreme scenarios, this effect will make the second object appear to grow older much faster, almost as a sort of time travel. This is why these theories are called relativity, because time is relative. It is with one's ability to observe that time is not traveling uniformly that these effects matter at all. It is only when one has a goal or a job to do that might be impacted by this relativity that it matters at all. Take satellites, for example. They orbit the Earth far further from its center of mass than you and I stand. This means that time will move slightly faster for these satellites. This is going back to what I mentioned before. As you get closer to a massive object, time will move more slowly. But remember, these are two theories of relativity. One says that being far from a massive object will speed up time, but traveling at great speeds will slow you down. And since these satellites are traveling so fast, these effects almost cancel each other out but the special relativistic effects went out. So the computers on these satellites are programmed to pre-correct for this time dilation by 38 microseconds per day to make sure their clocks are in sync with ours. This is what allows GPS to work as well as it does, as your GPS could be off by many meters or kilometers if these pre-corrective measures weren't taken, which might not be saying much, but what do I know? I'm, I'm blind, I can't drive. You can check out this video to learn about my vision. So to simplify everything down, Einstein was smart, you and I aren't, and your reference frame is unique and valid and powerful. In a way, the universe bends to your perception of time. And even though the title may be misleading, because when I first came up with this idea, I misunderstood special relativity. I assumed that it was acceleration that slowed down time, but it's just speed in general. And so, as I mentioned before, it is impossible to not move in a spatial dimension. Since our planet is traveling through space 66,627 miles per hour, not to mention that our solar system as a whole is traveling through interstellar space at 448,000 miles per hour, and the galaxy is hurtling through intergalactic space at 1.3 million miles per hour. So even though you're not traveling at the speed of light through time, you are going just about as fast through it as the rest of humanity. We're all on this planet, and we're all experiencing our own existence in unique ways. Not from the perspective of physics and the universe, but from the perspective of feelings and philosophy and love and hope. So maybe the thing that can unify us and remind us that we're not that different is that we're all hurtling through space and time. And it's scary, but we're here and we will continue to be. And maybe that's enough.